What's going on YouTube? This is Ribo at the Bench and today I have a fairly unconventional quick head-to-head -head, um, of these two very odd Spydercos that I happen to have in the collection right now. Um, so I thought, you know, these retail for about the same price. Now granted you can pick this guy up at a, you know, well below retail. This one you may pay up to twice uh, retail. However, uh, they do retail for about the same, and they are both unconventional, crazy, wacky spider codes, maybe some of the craziest ones in their lineup. Um, and so, you know, what better than to do a battle of the misfits? Um, so this is the spider co assist. This thing looks very alligator-like, uh, just this huge rescue knife, real big handle. Um, you can see that sawtooth uh, blade with a little uh, sharpened uh, edge here at the very end. You have these uh, hand grooves on the back. I'll show you what those are for in a second. And like I said, you have these really thick um, contoured FRN scales. You have a whistle right here. Um, you have, it's a back lock and pardon the construction noise. So you can grab this and squeeze and you have a carbide tip that comes out as a glass breaker. Like I said, you also have the whistle. This is made so that you can put a piece of rope in here and squeeze down to scissor cut it. Um, so all around just a big giant kind of rescue, uh, you know, paramedic type knife uh, made to be, it's a blunt tip. So made to kind of get in there in case you have to cut clothes or seatbelt or whatever off. Um, so a very niche knife. Uh, and then you have the uh, Dodo, which I've done a review of recently. Um, so this is the Spyderco Dodo, pretty self-explanatory, just a crazy little recurve blade from Spyderco, very ergonomic, G10, this is the Blade HQ exclusive with that nice Spyderco uh, ball lock. So um, let's do a head-to-head. -head. Um, let me go ahead and do some size comparisons, weight comparisons. Obviously these are two very different knives, so this video is more parody than anything else. Uh, but why not do it for real? So 2.7 ounces there and 3.9 ounces there. So you can see the assist is actually not that heavy for the size. And just to do some size comparisons to show how ridiculous this is, you're looking at about 1.6, 1.63 inches sharpened blade length. Now this guy has actually got 0.75 sharpened blade length and including the serrations 3.18 inches. Uh, let's see, the let's do closed in the pocket length on these guys. Your assist is going to be almost five inches and 4.3 on the uh, uh, what do you call it? The dodo. Uh, 0.67 inches on the grip on that uh, assist and then 0.4 on the dodo. The assist, like I said, is a really beefy uh, grip, which, which is actually incredibly comfortable. All right, uh, let's review real quick what we do in these head-to-heads. So I've got pocket clip scales, overall size, uh, that's height, width, weight, how does it carry, yada, yada. Ergonomics, action detent, blade steel lock system in the intangibles category. This review is absolutely ridiculous. So these categories are totally subjective. There's really no point in pitting these against each other, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right. Um, pocket clip. So both of these have a wire pocket clip. However, I consider the assist to be far superior to the Dodo. Uh, really for one reason. You can see they are about the same um, pocket clip in terms of, you know, the, I don't know what you want to call it, the dimensions or, um, you know, relative to the knife, they're about the same, both a non-deep carry uh, Spyderco wire clip. However, um, this one is just a little bit too small for me. I said this in my review of the Dodo, but it's a little bit too hard uh, too too tight and not enough space right there. The assist has that a little bit. You know, I would expect that this comes out, you know, deeper like some other knives. Um, but all in all, it's a bigger clip. It's, it's wider. And I think it's just a lot more springy. And so I tend to get this in and out of the pocket a lot easier. Plus the fact that it's kind of on this flattened piece. Um, whereas this is resting right on that G10 makes it just a little bit hard to get out of the pocket. Um, scale. So you have G10 in the jade here, which is nice. I really like that. And then you have the FRN 
over here. Now I am a huge FRN fan. I like the bi-directional texturing. Everything about this is solid. Um, however, uh, G10, and especially the way that they've done it here, I really like. I think it's the perfect aggressiveness of G10. Maybe go a hair uh, more aggressive, but uh, overall, I think it works really, really well. I love the translucency that it gives this knife. I don't have my flashlight with me, but I really like that translucency to where you can see all the guts of the knife under there. I think that's a really, really cool thing. Um, and overall, just I think looks a lot better. It gives it a quality to the knife um, that this guy doesn't have. And I think for good reason, because this is a rescue knife and you want it to be lightweight and just kind of do its job. But there you go. All right, um, overall size. So obviously these are very close in size. Um, so this one's gonna be pretty hard. Um, just kidding. So efficiency wise, obviously this guy is probably gonna win that battle. I will say, I think that the size is absolutely justified. And although it is a pretty large knife, it is incredibly lightweight. It actually carries pretty well because you've got that pocket clip all the way over to this side, which means you're carrying that really in the pocket and your hand's not gonna really, you know, it's not gonna be an issue there getting your hand in and out of the pocket. However, it's a huge knife. It is, you know, for sure the biggest Spyderco I've ever owned, the biggest knife. I mean, even when you put this up against the PM2, it's massive. Uh, the handle materials are very thick. It's not, not really made to be efficient. It's made to be grabbed kind of when you're wearing gloves. Whereas the Dodo has some elegance to it, uh, you know, some refinery, if you will. Um, it is uh, very ergonomic, so it's not thin enough to where it's not ergonomic. I think it carries fairly well. Um, you have a lot of that sticking out of the pocket, but I think that actually works well to kind of pull, pull up on. And overall, I mean, neither one of these are really the most space efficient knives. Um, and, and I would say you could even argue that this might win a size category because of the amount of blade that you're getting for the entire package of the knife. Whereas this guy, you're really, you know, getting half the sharpened blade length of the handle, which is kind of crazy. However, um, you get back for that, the ergonomics of this knife. And so I am going to give it to the Dodo. Obviously I am not a rescue person. I don't really need to be carrying around a blade that's almost uh, 0.7 inches thick. I'm sorry, not a blade, a uh, handle that's almost 0.7 inches thick. And this is a ridiculous review anyway, so there you go. Ergonomics, all right, so uh, this one is actually harder than I thought because the, the Dodo is kind of known for the ergonomics. That's the whole thing about this knife. Like that is the thing, right? Um, everyone looks at this and, and the justification is, well, this is made for uh, the hand, not for the eye. This thing is ergonomic, it's funky, it's, you know, whatever. And I totally agree with all of those things. It's a really cool knife, I love it. It, it is, uh, you know, it's very cool. Uh, it is very ergonomic. Um, however, this has really blown me away. Uh, you have these really deep finger grooves here. You have a very, very thick handle material that's contoured very well. And you have the, the feeling of the FRN. Uh, this just, uh, this may be the most comfortable knife that I own because, uh, you, I mean, there's just really nothing that is uh, made, there's no corners cut when it comes to uh, efficiency on this knife. And so you basically have like a fixed blade size here. Um, you have something that just, you know, falls right into the hand and you have a full grip because um, of how thick that handle material is. So uh, not that I've done a ton of like long time cutting tasks, but while both of these knives may be the most ergonomic spider Spydercos, maybe the most ergonomic knives that I've ever felt uh, right in front of you, I think the, the assist uh, takes it there. All right, action detent. So uh, this is a back lock and this is the ball lock. This one is a very, very easy win for the Dodo. Uh, I said this in my review, but the Dodo has an unbelievable lockup. If you listen to this, just incredibly, incredibly satisfying. The, uh, the assist here is just your regular Spyderco back lock which means that it's excellent, but it is no, uh, no dodo and no ball lock. Um, okay, blade. Wow, this one will be fun. Um, so you have, like I said, serration here, uh, and then you have a little sharpened piece here with a hook um, so that you can do kind of detail work or you know slicing, whatever you need. Also a great box cutter, so you kind of hook in the box and then you slice along that first inch or so there. Um, so the blade's really interesting. Uh, one thing I've noticed, well, actually I'll save that for my review of the assist. Um, and then obviously here you have this really sharp recurve and pardon my dog in the background losing his mind. Um, but uh, that's just how it goes. 
Um, so you have this really sharp recurve here on this tiny little blade, um, which is kind of the, the, the famous thing about the Dodo and, and gives it its name. Um, and so if I were to have to pick between both of these, uh, it's going to be really difficult because neither one of these blades is necessarily designed for an everyday carry knife. Um, this one, I think, has some advantages when it comes to opening boxes, puncturing, and kind of dragging. It does very nicely. However, uh, because of that recurve, it's not a great slicer across, you know, if I were to take a piece of paper, I've done this, I won't do it on camera, and kind of slice along. Um, it does have a little bit of trouble tracking because of that recurve. Um, while it's very sharp and it cuts some things very well, it has significant limitations. And I, I think that, um, you know, that's, that's a known thing. That's something you kind of know when you're picking this guy up. Uh, this guy, for as ridiculous as it is, I mean, I'm a practical guy and like this is the most practical blade between the two of these. Um, I'm not a serrated knife person. However, I've been thinking more and more that I, you know, need to give it a try. Um, but given the fact that you have the serrations and you kind of have the option of what those give you in terms of like cutting rope or difficult material, that kind of thing, just chewing through material. Um, plus you have the, uh, the uh, little, I don't know what you want to call this, straightened edge piece for like detail work, plus the hook on the end of it, plus the size that you're getting. Uh, to me, you, you know, it's a it's a win for the assist. I, I mean, both of these blades are cool, but when I think like which one would I reach for, it's like ah, uh, neither one of these really. But um, you know, this one, while it's going to be difficult to sharpen, it's probably going to be easier than this guy because you can just get in there with a file, um, and then this piece should be fairly easy to sharpen. Plus, it's H1, so it's going to be super easy to sharpen. Um, but, uh, you know, that is what it is. It's, again, this is a ridiculous review, but uh, there you go. Steel, okay, so M4 versus the H1 soft as soap kind of steel here. Um, yeah, M4. Lock system, so back lock, uh, ball lock. Um, we talked about the action detent, and that was a clear win here. Now when we're talking about like which lock system do I like, I think the win is still easily gonna be the Dodo. Um, not only do I think it's probably a stronger lock, um, it has that coolness factor. I mean, and that's what this review is about. Clearly this review isn't be taken seriously. Uh, this is about that coolness factor of the ball lock versus a, a traditional Spyderco back lock. I mean, how can you argue with that? Incredibly strong, forced in there, kind of wedged in. Um, between those two big chunks of metal. Um, plus you get to see kind of the inner workings of it. It's not perfect. It's not uh, super easy to disengage, um, particularly if you just uh, cut your nails like I did. Um, but it is a really, really fun lock. So, uh, you know, I'll give the win to the Dodo there. All right, so that leaves us with a pretty clear win for the Dodo and one category remaining, which is the intangibles. Um, I don't even think I can hand out the intangibles uh, victory for either one of these because I think they both have it. Um, this, when I saw this online, was a really ridiculous knife. I had really no interest in it. And then when I saw it in person, I was like, oh yeah, okay, I get it. Um, because what you don't pick up in the pictures is how ergonomic this knife is, how it just falls in the hand. You don't really pick up the coolness of being able to grip and push out that carbide tip. Not that I'm ever going to use that, but it is super, super cool. Um, you don't pick up on just how, you know, I don't know, how enjoyable the funkiness of this knife is. Uh, and so I think it's like not really a practical knife for many people, um, but it does show Spyderco's ingenuity um, their commitment to creating something that's useful and practical for many people. And I really appreciate that. I think it's, you know, something really, really cool about Spyderco. Um, and really both of these knives kind of embody that character. Um, with the Dodo, I, I think very similar. Like this, this shows Spyderco's commitment to trying something that's a little bit out of the, out of the norm and unusual. Uh, to do something that is, you know, many people hate, many people think is ugly. Um, to do it in a jade green like this uh, with Blade HQ, to do it with that crazy recurve, just this funky blade, um, just the whole package. It shows, you know, they want to try something that's a little bit different. They've created a cult following with this knife. So really, I can't really pick an intangibles. I think this both, ha the, both of these have it. While neither one of these is a practical carry option for me, um, they're super fun knives and they're super fun to get on the table together. Hope you enjoy this, uh, hope you have enjoyed this ridiculous review um, and that you will come back uh, and I will see you next time.